Hello, I'm Nicholas Henshaw. I'm the Dean of Chelmsford, and welcome to Chelmsford Cathedral. Today I'm looking at this uh, extraordinary picture behind me. I know if you look at it closely, you'll think, is it a picture? Is it a window? What's going on here? Well, for many centuries, that was a blank wall with the outlines of an old window in it. And then about 20 years ago, the then Provost, the Dean of the Cathedral here, uh, decided that he wanted to introduce much more arts into the building. Indeed, Chelsea Cathedral is now known as the best cathedral for modern art in the country, which is a surprising accolade. It used to be Chichester, but clearly it's us now. And so he got the artist uh, Mark Cazalet to design what might happen in this window space behind me. Now, for me, it's very personal because the tree, the tree of life as it's called, but the tree on which it's based is a tree just outside the bottom of my garden, just beyond the cathedral. So it's a very familiar tree. It's a very beautiful tree. It's a very large tree. And what Mark Hazlitt's done in that is to try and tell a story. Now, it's not a story that goes from right to left or up to down. It's a story that you have to read through every single bit of this great piece of art. He's inserted it, of course, into the old frames of the windows. The other side of what was the window is, uh, is where our choirs rehearse. But the window itself, or rather the painting inserted in that window space, tells a story about Essex, about St. Said, the first Bishop of Essex, and about the journey of faith. On one side of the picture, you have a picture of dereliction, things going wrong. The trees are beginning to rot and the leaves are going to fall. Indeed, if you look closely, you'll see black rubbish bags on the ground beneath it, and you'll even see a hanged man. Really shocking. I think that's meant to represent Judas and betrayal. But on the other side of the tree, you can see the leaves are flourishing, the corn is growing, and there's a, an old monk sitting there with a bald head. And that's St. Said. St. Said floated down from... Uh, from Lindisfarne in the northeast, and settled first at Tilbury and then at Bradwell on Sea, and built the oldest church that's still in use in the UK, St Peter's Bradwell. And St Said was a person who, with his community, sought to help other people understand what it was to follow Jesus Christ and to have a full life in response. A place of flourishing, a place where people grew to learn and to grow in themselves. And so St Said on the other side of the tree, sits there welcoming who? Well, there are two children running through the corn. And one has an A on it, and one has an E on it. They're Adam and Eve. And it's a sense that through said, and through the ministry of this cathedral church, we're seeking to help everybody, the whole of humanity, have a better vision of what it might be to live. We're standing in Chelmsford Cathedral and we're right at the east end of the building. That's the end just beyond where the altar, the holy table stands. And we're looking at one of the organs. Now, organs have a long history in terms of church music. In the early church, well, they didn't have any musical instruments. They just sang. Uh, but by the Middle Ages, organs were beginning to be created and they were used particularly in churches. And the bigger they got, well, the more noise they could make. Here at Chelmsford Cathedral, there's been a whole history of different instruments in the building. And then in the early 1990s, they took the bold step, it's long before I got here, the bold step of inserting two new organs into the fabric of the cathedral. And here, this organ is the one right up by the chancel, and this is where the choir often sing on, on, a, from, on a Sunday morning and some of the weekdays. And you can see what a lovely ornate instrument it is with these beautiful pipework and decoration that kind of makes it a fun instrument to look at, let alone to listen to. And what's been beautiful about clearing some of the space around here is that people can see the organ in a new way. And for some organ recitals going forward, people actually sit here and watch the organ being played. It's a fascinating sight to watch an organist from behind because what you actually begin to see are their hands moving very rapidly across the keys. And then you begin to wonder how on earth they're doing that with their hands and also playing with their feet at the same time. Organs are not the only kinds of music that we have in church, of course. We use many different media. But here at Chelsea Cathedral, we prize both our organs as a great gift from the past and a promise for the future.
Well, I'm now standing in one of my favourite and most exciting places in Chelmsford Cathedral, right up in a stone balcony on the south side of the building. And this is a very unusual place, and it was actually created in more modern times, because the room behind me, which is today known as the library, I'll say a bit more about that in a minute, used to be the county records office for the county of Essex. Now, that was in the days when Essex included not what we call Essex, but also Southend and Thurrock, and indeed the whole of the East End of London, more or less. So this was the centre, because Chelmsford was the county town, and what is now the cathedral was the county church at the very heart of that region. Indeed, we're only 25 miles, as the crow flies, but of course the crow never flies in a straight line. We're only 25 miles from any community in Essex and East London where we stand now. This balcony was created because a previous dean of the cathedral thought that the existing entrance through the wall over there wasn't dignified enough. So he created this wonderfully dignified way of getting into the library. The only problem is the staircase is very, very narrow and very, very small. The result of that is I always hit my head whenever I come up here. When you come into the cathedral and look up here, you see the library and you wonder what's in there. Now, we're not going in there today because we need to look after the books in a very, in a very careful way. But we've got records going back centuries. But maybe the biggest prize is printed books from the 16th century. These are some of the earliest printed books, uh, well, in existence. So, for instance, there was a man called Martin Luther who was alive in the 16th century. We have a book of his works dated to 1540, when he was still alive. Now, that's extraordinary. What we'd love to do one day is find a better way of displaying these books so many more people can come into contact with a great piece of Essex history. We're standing in the gardens of Chelmsford Cathedral, but I've just had a very traumatic experience. Uh, if you've watched this film through, you'll know that I've just been on the balcony inside the cathedral and I got locked in there. It was really quite scary. I had no way of getting out. I thought, what do I do? I can't get the key in the lock and I can't get the door open. At which point I had to throw the keys off the balcony to somebody below who let me out. It was a very good moment emerging out of the darkness into the light and there was a huge number of school children just coming to the cathedral to have a day of learning and fun in the building. So I'm feeling slightly traumatized now. So if I look a bit scared, well, there's a good reason. It wasn't the children, it was getting locked in the balcony. I'm not going up, to up there again in some while. But let me introduce you to the gardens. Now, if you're familiar with Chelmsford, you know, if you come up the high street or down New Street, you enter this beautiful green space. In fact, the City Council referred to the grounds of the cathedral as the premier green space at the heart of the city. And I love that phrase, not because I want to be grand about the cathedral gardens, but because this is a fantastic amenity for anybody who lives and works in this, in this area. What I love is actually this time of day. Uh, now, we've tried to be very careful, so we've got a space where we aren't crowded out by other people. But the grounds of the cathedral are full of school children, both students in secondary school and, and primary school. And in about half an hour's time, you'll have people coming out of the offices locally and eating their picnic lunches all over these grounds. And that's what I love, that the cathedral is not for me. The cathedral is not for those who worship there, although it is as well, of course. It's not simply for visitors or cultural activities. It's actually for everybody. I'm passionately devoted to the notion that cathedrals are public space for all, and that includes the grounds. So if you don't know this beautiful space with lovely roses over there, a beautiful tree behind me, literally open, open land in the middle of a crowded city, then come and make yourself known here. Come and introduce yourself to a place where we've got some big plans to, to make it even better. But for now, a beautiful space, the premier green space at the heart of this busy city. We're still in the grounds of Chelmsford Cathedral, but what I want to focus on is the building, the building you can see behind you. It's an unusual view of the cathedral, but one of my favourites because it's kind of higgledy-piggledy. You can see the roof lines coming in from different directions and the top of the tower just peeping over the top. But what's extraordinary about almost any view of Chelmsford Cathedral from wherever you're looking is that at a glance you can see 800 years of history. 
So this wall here is actually 20th century, although the roof above it is 21st century. But it looks just like the ancient fabric because it's made out of flints or, or things like beach stones really. And of course they're all the same age, so to speak. So when you build a wall out of those, then it matches what you've already got. The tower, you can just see over there, well, when we had some work done on it, well, about six years ago now, our archaeologist was fascinated to go and find some Roman stones. And I thought, it's not that old, but of course, Chelmsford itself is a Roman town, or was a Roman town in the Roman era. And many archaeologists find bits of Roman stone cropping up in all sorts of places. And although we never found any in the tower, there is almost certainly, as part of the core, reused Roman stones in that tower. So that goes back to the 4th century AD. So this is extraordinary. It's just 800 years. It's nearly 2,000 years of history. And of course, when we look at a building like this, it's not just the stones that tell a story, but it's the different uses of the building down the centuries. We visited what was the county records office, which is now a small library. We've stood in the nave of the cathedral and looked at various windows, and yet each generation is writing a new story as the cathedral never stands still. It's always being made new, and the crucial bit of that is you. Each generation making their own version of the cathedral, writing new meanings on it and discovering together how this truly can be the spiritual heart of the city of Chelmsford. Well now I'm standing right on top of the cathedral, literally at the top of the tower. And to be honest, it's quite scary. It's not swaying, but it is a bit windy. And I haven't been up here for years. I think the last time I was up here was when they were doing some work to mend the tower because some of the woodwork had got rotten and some of the stonework needed repairing. But it's a very exciting place to be. I wish we could open this to the public, but the staircase is just too narrow. It's uh, very, very difficult to negotiate. And the view from up here is, is like none other in Chelmsford. You're virtually the highest point and you can see Danbury Hill, you can see over towards Galley Wood, you can see all around, and you can see every building in the city. But more than that is this sense of the space and what's going on around you, the busyness of the city and the exciting sense of a city that's alive. What I love about this tower is, is that it stands there visible from most corners of the city, and that the bells ring out day after day. The bells are beneath me. That's quite a shocking thought. I'm actually on top of the bells. Uh, we've got a wonderful uh, group of ringers who come every Sunday and through the week for special festivals. But actually one of my favorite hidden bits of the whole cathedral, which you won't even be able to see, because I can't see it from here, is the dragon on top of the building. Now, many churches have weather vanes, and often they're in the shape of a cockerel. That's a reminder of the story of St. Peter in the Gospel according to St. John, where the cock crows when Peter has denied him three times. But we've got a dragon, not a cockerel. And I don't know why, nobody seems to know why, but it's a glorious dragon, and it tells us the direction of the wind. And I love it when I'm coming to the cathedral in the morning for my prayers, and in the evening the same, is to look up, and I see this glorious dragon showing which way the wind's blowing. And uh, that seems like the right kind of sign for, a, for a, an exciting cathedral at the heart of the city, seeking to find a way into a new future now this pandemic is coming to an end. <laughs>